and cut the wire. Cut the wire first. Our solar panels are here. Looks like we got a project on our hands now. Thank you again to Red Arc for sending this to us and for even paying for the customs portion of that. Hopefully we can get them installed on Dauntless here really soon and start getting some sun onto our battery in the habitat. Step one of our solar panel installation is spray painting the mounting brackets. Everything on the roof is black, so for aesthetics and also so as not to draw attention to anything on the roof, we opted to get these spray painted. And by get these spray painted, I mean Eric is spray painting them. Just doing a first coat, we're gonna let it dry for about an hour, let it get tacky and whatnot, and then come back and spray it again, and then a third coat. And then once that's done, let it sit for 24 hours and hopefully we'll be good to go. We had electrical system issues for a solid half of 2023. We know that we had a sensor go bad in our Manager 30 system. Thankfully, a replacement was sent to us. That was awesome and we got it replaced in Ecuador. But once that was fixed, there was still an issue and the issue was that we were charging with the alternator when we were running the engine and with shore power, but no solar power was coming in. We decided to turn to Red Arc. They're already supporting us with our electrical system, with the Manager 30 and the Red Vision system. And we thought it would be a great idea to bring in solar panels from the same company, hoping that they would be as compatible as possible and we wouldn't have issues anymore. We got them, we're so excited to install them today. We're taking off the old solar panels, which were just stuck down to the roof of the alley cab. Leatherman Arc, not sponsored by Leatherman. My best tool that I carry. Installation is always an if with us. We are learning as we go. Next step is to clean off the top of the alley cab, get it nice and clean and prepared for the mounting. And then we'll take the measurements, add the adhesive, wire it up, and hope for the best. There's a lot of dust on top of here. Carlos is blowing it off, sweeping it off, and then we'll use some thinner to really get it nice and clean. We have to mount these panels in parallel and we're trying to figure out how we're going to mount these as far as the spacing and measurements and how we're gonna stick them. Red arc panels have been mounted to the mounting brackets using stainless steel screws, which I picked up at the hardware store. On the corners, in the center. This is what the setup's gonna look like on the roof once it's done let's see how they sit the second panel's coming up now it looks like we'll be adding about three inches to our overall height when all is said and done we're giving as much space here as we are here for aesthetics really more than anything else this is where the cables are going to enter both panels have been placed so that the box is on that side and the wires come this way so the wires are actually going to come out through here and then we'll probably use this channel right here to bring them over. In order to work properly with the Manager 30, it has to be in parallel. And so we have these Y connectors that Red Arc supplied us with. So this is what the parallel wiring looks like. It's going from both panels to these two leads, which will then lead into the roof. So right now we are just placing it and then marking the spots with a little paint pen so we can take this off and prepare the surface for gluing. We're using Silca 221, which is an adhesive, a silicone adhesive. 252 is actually what's recommended the most, but it's not available here in Peru that I could find. So we're using 221, which is a good alternative. So Carlos is saying that he just cleaned this off with water and soap, and then he's going to bring up a degreaser and clean it once again in preparation for applying the Silca 221 to the top of the alley cab and then placing the panels. That's how we're putting the silicone on. We've traced out the mounting brackets and then filling it up with the silicone. We've pulled out the wires here, the cables, so that we can connect the other panel, which has to be done first. And then we're gonna drag it out this way before we put the next panel down. We've put the second panel on and I've run the cable down this guide right here, out the back. Our plan, is to let this cure. This is the 221. This is the Sika Gray 221. 
which again is here, but it's also in between the panel here. And then we're going to put black silicone all the way around the edges and tape it off so it's cleaned up at the end and that you won't be able to see any of the gray. Save this screw for last on both sides just so that we would have the ability to move it about. We don't have the clips for the Anderson plug that go onto the batteries. Carlos created some and he plugged it in and immediately we saw a reading on the Red Arc um, Red Vision, which is the monitor for what's happening with the Manager 30. So we know the solar panels are functional. We know that we're getting solar power. This is a huge sign right now, just to see the sun light up on the Red Vision display and on my phone, because uh, the Red Vision actually gives you the same information on an app that Red Arc has. So we're able to see it all happening in real time and it just feels great. Day two on the solar panel installation. Today, we, and by we, I don't really mean we, need to do the black silicone around the mounting brackets. We need to redo the connection with copper wire and... Cut the wire. Cut the wire first. As Brittany mentioned, we are going to put black silicone around all of this gray Sika 221, which we used. Then we are going to put new connectors in here that are made of solid copper. And we're gonna cut this wire or we're gonna stuff the wire under there and secure it so that we have the extra wire. We haven't really decided. Carlos is putting the black 227 sealant and just kind of cleaning it up so that we don't have all that gray showing up on there. He's masked it off so it's a little bit cleaner. And then we're redoing the connection with solid copper. Now we're working on the cabling, which needs to get plugged in over here. And then put those covers on there and hopefully clean it up some and we should be done. Not sure if you can see this, but underneath here is the cable. The round wrap cable is under here and we've zip tied it to a hole that's underneath here. So it's not gonna be moving around. Then we just put this cable guard on here. We're probably gonna cut a section of this off, maybe about here, add it on top of this. These are the full copper connectors and we've added this so that they don't move or get pulled off. Brittany is inspecting the work. This is the Red Vision display from Red Arc showing that our battery is at 100%. And you can see that the solar doesn't even have to push any more juice to our battery because it's been kicking all morning. This display here shows that we're getting six watts right now. That's because we've already gotten 671 watt hours. And this is a really cool display which shows our solar energy per day. Today is February 18th and you can just see how much power we've been getting from these panels. This display shows our state of charge per day. It's been in the green pretty much every single day, topped out since we've got the solar panels installed. On this display, you can see our state of charge per hour. At six o'clock this morning, we were already at 91%. Sunrise was just after 5.30. And look at this, 96, 99 at 10 o'clock in the morning. And one more display here that you can see. These are our manager inputs. So the vehicle at the top, the vehicle is not running. That's why there's nothing there. The solar is kicking off 23.9 volts and we are not plugged in shore power. So the only power we're getting right now is from our solar panels by the power of Red Arc. The Red Arc solar panel installation wasn't really that difficult. It was just made more challenging by not having access to all the stuff like you do back home in the States. But we got it done. We now have two 120 watt monocrystalline solar panels providing power to our 170 amp hour lithium battery in the habitat. And these panels are awesome. They're giving us a massive amount of power when we're out camping completely disconnected. As long as we have sunshine, our battery has been fully powered by 10 a.m. every morning, no matter what we're charging. If you're considering doing this and you have questions that we didn't answer, let us know. Drop a comment below. We really wish we had this resource when we were starting to install these panels and we just didn't see that it existed. This is your reminder to subscribe to our channel if you want to drive around the world with us and please give this video a like. And if you want to go behind the scenes with us, hit us up on our Patreon. We answer questions there all the time and your support really means a lot to us. We do hope that you benefited from this and until next time we will see you in our next video.